is a framework for stepping into unknown territory like this. It's not something that was invented theoretically. It's something that someone observed and, and observed the pattern and created. And we trusted that that framework would, would emerge. And it, was, and it did. And what I'd like to do now is bring you that framework and connect it directly to what you identified during the cafe in terms of what is important to move forward. And with this whole territory, there's so much that's unknown. There's so many uh, variables. We've got the human resource issue as well uh, that, that is about to hit in, in healthcare and everywhere else. It's really uncertain where to go. This is uncharted territory. It can be like stepping in quicksand. What we want to identify is where are those stepping stones that are not too far apart. Okay, where the density was that was mentioned that they're not too far apart that you can reach so that you can start to move forward whatever you're setting. And for those who are already in collaborative practice, how do you take it to the next step? Because you never get there, right? You're always evolving and going to the next step. So in terms of uncertain ground like this, the best framework we found that came up was one that was developed by a gentleman by the name of Dee Hawk. And he was the man who created a little organization called Visa International, you may have heard of it. You may have it in your wallets. And he's written a couple of books uh, on, on this. <coughs> this was actually the framework that he used for starting Visa. And for those who don't know, Visa is, I, I think, probably like a $23 trillion organization right now. Uh, but there's only about 500 people at the center. And they have no clue of the entire scope of the organization. But you've got thousands of little boards of directors each running their own cards who don't know what all the others are doing. And yet, it all works in unison. The interesting thing is the framework that Dee came up with doesn't just apply to huge organizations. It applies to small teams as well. It is common threads for starting to build new structures, common stepping stones for moving forward in uncertain territory. And some of it may seem counterintuitive because it's not what we have done necessarily in the past, and not the order in which we've taken those seven souls. <clears throat> the framework that he brought out, he talked about three different realms. You have the realm of chaos, where you have a clue what's going on, it's you know, there's this absolute disorder, things are happening completely well, chaotically. At the far end, you have control, where everything is regimented, you've got regulations and policies for everything, you have to sign to take a two-minute break, whatever. The interesting thing is, if you live in either of those worlds, there's usually two reactions. If you're too controlled, or if there's zero control, one of two things generally happen. People either rebel, or they just give up and say, what's the point? Okay? if you're at those two extremes. And what tends to happen is we jump from one to the other. If there's no control and it's totally chaotic, oh, let's slam down a lot of control to the policy to do that, and then it just gets too controlling and people need to free up and you jump to either extreme. Both of those do not work effectively, especially when we are changing as much as we are. I heard what is it, in this century alone, we're gonna go through more change than we have in the last, what, 10,000 years as a human race? So, you know, for, for those um, working in acute care, for example, uh, surgery within 20 years will not be done with cutting. They're developing, they've already got nanobots, they have to refine them, microscopic robots that you can sit down, take an injection, take a pill of these things, sit down for a couple hours, read the newspaper, they'll go to work in your body, do the work, and you leave. Done. Within 20 years, that's the way most surgery will be happening. That's the level of change that we're at. Okay? So this is the world that we're living in where you cannot control and regulate things because it's just changing too fast. What he found is in between chaos and control is that realm of order where things happen regularly in unison and so on. And, and it's just a, it's like a system. It moves very smoothly. Okay, it's, it's the same way all the time. The thing is, we want things to move more or less the same way all the time, but, but the, the world isn't the same. We need to adapt to what's happening outside. So if you're just in that realm of order, you're soon going to fall, fall into chaos because you can't keep up with the changes. So what 
he said you need is a little bit of chaos mixed in with the order to allow yourself to be creative and adaptive. You can't policy yourself to, to create in, in your teams, to create innovation. You've got to create structures that allow you to do that. And I don't want to give you too many buzzwords, but, but these were for this area. The, that uh, blue part there between chaos and order, called, because it was chaos and order, he called it the chaotic zone. Okay? And what he found was that there are some very clear steps that you can go through, some stepping stones for that. And they're very much aligned with what you identified before lunch. So what he said you start off with is need. What is the need? And this is what I heard as I was floating around to the various teams, when uh, I was over here listening a little bit to Gasha, they were saying, you know, every once in a while we have to come back and say, what are we doing this for? Well, let's focus back to the patient. Why? What, what are we doing this for? And, and let everything be shaped around that. From that need comes a clearly defined shared purpose. This is not the leader of the team says this is the purpose. This is the whole team collectively saying, why are we doing what we're doing? It may seem intellectually obvious, but let's connect to the emotional why. We're committed to what we're doing, so where's the source of that passion? And let's collectively state it. And I'm not talking about these wonderful um, you know, mission statements that you see on the pretty plaques on the wall that you know, strive to be the best. I'm talking about plain, simple English that everyone understands, okay? The, the best example I know of is in the 60s, in the early 60s, uh, Kennedy said we'll put a man on the moon by the end of the decade, which was impossible, by the way, at the time. But they did it, July 20th, 69. And the reason was NASA's purpose, you ask anyone down to the janitor in NASA, their purpose was to put a man on the moon. Everybody knew it, and everybody was focused. Absolutely 100% focused. From the purpose, we say, okay, this is our purpose. This is why we exist. This is how we're going to meet that need. Then you move to principles. How are we going to act in realizing that? Some people talk about it as values and such. But how are we going to interact and act in living that purpose fully? And I'm not, again, there I'm not just talking about simple words like respect, integrity, you've got to go deeper. Have the conversations with your team about okay, what does it mean? Because you and I may say, yes, we both believe in integrity, but we have different definitions in our head. So you live by your definition, I live by mine, and we wind up ticking each other off because we're not understanding it. So let's translate what those principles mean in day-to-day -day behavior so we know how we're expected to behave. And then can hold each other accountable for that. Once you know, here's the need, this is the purpose, these are the principles, then you say, who should be involved? Who are the people? Who needs to be on the team? You know, there was talk about, it's not just the patients, the families, so on. What other providers are part of that team? Who's missing? Who do we need? How do we make it happen? Then you move to things such as, what's the concept? How are we going to work? What's the team going to look like? And structure, what are the interactions? How do we interact in terms of scopes of practice and so on and so forth? And then you start moving to practice. The big danger, what we tend to do, and the thing that gets us into trouble is we jump to concept and structure right away. What's a new, what's the org chart for the, the team? What's the, you know, what, what are the policies of how we're going to interact? What are, without being clear on why we're doing it, without laying the foundation. And we are a left brain society, and this is the left brain side of it. And unfortunately, if you don't have that alignment up front, you create a lot of conflict. And I, and I would hazard to guess say that's why We've got a lot of the problems we're dealing with today is all the different silos have created their own concepts and structures without coming at it from a shared purpose. 